not only does Jesus Christ understand the pains of those that have been sinned upon, right? He understands those pains about the sinner. Not only does he understand the pains that the abused feel, he understands the pains that the abuser feels. We are Saints in the South, your source for gospel growth and good times. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Saints in the South, episode 214. Good to be back. Good to be with you. Thank you for tuning in. And be sure and subscribe and hit your notification bell if you haven't already done so. Don't forget about that super thanks as well. That uh, what's, what's that, love offering? That's it. Love so offering. Love offering, that's right. Be sure and uh, we'll put it to good use. We promise. We promise. P- pinky promise, right? That's right. With both pinkies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, let's go ahead and jump into this. We are out of the books of Nephi, and we are in Jacob. Jacob chapters 1 through 4, and the title is Be Reconciled Unto God Through the Atonement of Christ. The Nephites considered Nephi their great protector. He had also protected them against spiritual dangers, warning them against sin, and urging them to come into Christ. Now that task fell to Jacob, whom Nephi had consecrated to be a priest and teacher, Jacob felt a responsibility to boldly warn those who were beginning to labor in sin, while also comforting the wounded soul of those who had been hurt by the sins of others. How would he do both? He would point them to Jesus Christ, because both groups needed the Savior's healing. Like the message of Nephi before him, Jacob's testimony was a call to be reconciled unto God through the atonement of Christ. So my opening uh, opening thought here was let me ask a uh, bishop rogue bishop Ackard here did you feel any pressure in following the bishop that served before you hmm. uh define pressure and the pressure may following. be a, pressure may be a a a bad a bad word i i let me share my experience and then you can share yours to kind of see where I'm going. Okay. Uh, bishop Michael Mobley was the bishop before I served as bishop. Loved, loved uh, Bishop Mobley, served with him for four years as a counselor. So saw firsthand all the hard work, the spiritual dedication and leading and everything that he did to our ward. And so following, following him, um, naturally kind of the, the 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 natural man feeling hey you know i've got to i've got to i got to follow bishop mobley's shoes here and try and do my best uh so again not a huge pressure not a big deal but but also uh you want to do your best you want to serve the people and uh a bishop mobley that had just been released did a great job and so i wanted to do a great job as well um so jacob here He's been following his brother, um, and now he has been given the spiritual responsibility to. Uh, now, remember, he, he's not the king, right? He, he's, he was not he was not set as the king of the people, but 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 he is a he is a priest, a teacher, a spiritual leader, a prophet among the people. So, I think he's feeling a little bit of extra pressure, a little extra responsibility. He's followed his brother Nephi, so that that's kind of where I, where I'm going and where my thoughts mm. are on that. Yeah, for sure. You know, he's feeling it. Yeah. Anybody, everybody does. I mean, just imagine, um, imagine a uh, president of the church mm-hmm. passing away, and the next one stepping up. Oh my gosh, there's got to be tons of pressure that they put on themselves and and feel, right. um, like wow. Well, and to well to your to your point, verse verse nineteen, uh, just to kind of you know, kind of finished my thought up on this. It says, and we did magnify our office unto the Lord, taking upon us the responsibility, answering the sins of the people upon our own heads, if we did not teach them the word of God with all diligence. Wherefore, by laboring with our might, their blood might not come upon our garments. 
Otherwise, their blood would come upon our garments and would not be found spotless at the last day. So he, he understood the responsibility uh, and, and, and I think uh, felt it, felt it heavily as well. So uh, he probably I've got a felt quote. Like he had some bit, pretty big shoes to fill. I mean, he's this is his older brother. It's not like you know, it's not like he's super close in age like all the other brothers were. There's there's a big span right. there, and uh, he's got to be feeling that pressure of big shoes, big sandals to fill. Yeah. Big oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I've got a quote from uh, President Hugh B. Brown from October 1962. He, he said, quote, President John Taylor said on one occasion, speaking to the brethren of the priesthood, if you do not magnify your calling, God will hold you responsible for those you might have saved had you done your duty. This is a challenging statement. If I, by reason of sins of commission or omission, lose what I might have had in the hereafter, I, must, I myself must suffer and doubtless my loved ones with me. But if I fail in my assignment as a bishop, a stake president, a mission president, or one of the general authorities of the church, if any of us fail to teach, lead, direct, and help to save those under our direction and within our jurisdiction, then the Lord will hold us responsible if they are lost as the result of our failure. Yes, That's a yeah, responsibility. So it, it is. It is. And so... Uh, you know, that was, you know, one of the things that I was kind of heavy on my mind as well, um, about being held responsible for not magnifying a, a particular calling, you know, and, and the biggest thing that I think about is, is, is a parent, yeah. you know, hold, having that responsibility to teach your children the gospel. But let's say for, let's say that, that, that we don't magnify that, that we fall short in that. You know, my, my question is, is how, you know, and, and later on we realize that we, that we, that we, that we haven't, or that we didn't magnify and we seek forgiveness, ask for forgiveness, you know, is there forgiveness just like there is with, with other sins? Are you really asking that Bishop Jackson? I'm just I'm I'm discussing I'm I'm oh, yeah, okay. there. <laughs> it, 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 that's right exactly okay yeah because yeah I I remember seeing there better be or there's gonna be a whole lot of suffering and and uh, yeah okay. oh, that's yeah. my point that's my point because because the, the the quote that Kenny just shared is is heavy really extremely heavy, heavy right but 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 if I have sincerely repented for having not magnifying magnified whatever office that i've held you know i mean i, I believe there's, there's there's going to be that that forgiveness there uh you know so there there has to be because none of us are perfect and won't be perfect you know but i am reminded of the of, of what the brethren have said over and over again it says there is no greater calling than that of a husband and a father or a mother and a and a wife mm -hmm. no greater calling nothing else nothing who was it that said failure there's no success that can compensate for failure in the home now now having said that i would go to the um i would every, have everyone go to the the general handbook that defines success because um, I think many of us could feel and probably do feel that if we have wayward children or any or wayward, um, if we're a bishop and we have a wayward flock, if we're a stake president, we have a wayward stake, whatever, that we'll feel some accountability for that. But you have to remember, as defined in the general handbook, that agency plays a big role and you can't base your success on someone else's agency. The only thing that you can do is make sure that you're doing everything that you can being everything that you can. And then that's it there. It's, it's on them to choose, but you know, sometimes I'm sure Jackson, you feel this way. I think any of us would feel this way. Once we get released from a calling and several years later, we look back on that calling and go, Wow, I I really messed that up. I mean, I I was called as a, a a ward young men's president when they still had those when I was like 27, 20 
six, something like that. And so now that I'm almost dead, I look back and those and look back at that time and go, oh my gosh, I made so many mistakes. I did so many things wrong. I I just mucked it up bad. But you know, that's that would be being unfair to myself as well, because that would be my self having progressed judging a younger man in the situation that he was in would be no different than us judging um, any general authority or any person or for that matter for a culture that was in the past judging them by the culture that we live in today it's 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 not you can't do it you, you, you can't do that it's um I, I think the Lord's definitely gonna have um some understanding there. I mean, he made us and he knows us and, and it's a lifetime of growth and learning. And it's a bit like, I mean, every, everything's constantly in motion, right? Um, and so you're, you're constantly a different person. You're constantly learning and growing, but so are your kids. So are your parents. Like they're still growing and learning as they're becoming grandparents and it's constantly in motion. It's kind of like trying to change uh, change a flat tire on a car while it's driving down the road. I mean, it's it's a moving target constantly. So I think the Lord certainly has some uh, understanding there. Um, when when life's pulling you a, a thousand different directions, that um, that that you're learning how to prioritize and learning how to to stay humble and stay teachable while still teaching others um, and and trying to be the perfect balance of, of, um, bold and yet, and yet kind of meek and, and, and understanding. So it's a tough thing. At least I hope the Lord is that way, you know? Well, if we remember the quote from last time when we were talking from, um, uh, president Nelson that said, the Lord doesn't care. I'm paraphrasing. The Lord doesn't care who you were. He cares who you're becoming. And so, mm-hmm. Going back to the the original question from Jackson, uh, you know, are we becoming better? Are we trying to do better? Are we like slowly, one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, becoming better? Then, then that's what the Lord wants. He's He's happy with that because we're progressing. However yeah, painful yeah. that may feel inside, because <laughs> we don't right. feel like we we don't feel like we're progressing fast enough. Right. And that's what we've talked about before. Sometimes we have such expectations of ourselves. It, it can, in a way, get in our way because um, because we're, we're unhappy or we feel like that imposter syndrome or like a hypocrite because we're not perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it can sometimes steal our happiness for the here and now. It can steal our effectiveness for the here and now um, because we don't feel like we're the right fit. And I think in this uh, later on in the discussion, uh, we'll, we'll hit on a topic or discussion of um, whom the Lord calls, He qualifies. I think that comes up in today's uh, this lesson. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's there's truth in that. And it's easy to see, you know, watching the kids do any kind of sporting activity or performance or whatever. And you see the little imperfections and they hit a stage or an age where they get so flustered because, I mean, they didn't they didn't hit a they didn't hit a home run. And you're like, it's T-ball, you know, <laughs> like it's not that big a deal. Right. But they get so mad that they can't even focus on the next thing because they didn't hit a home run, you know, three, three at bats ago or whatever. And you're going, it's yeah. not a big deal. Come on, you know, just keep going. And I think that goes, I think Kenny had said it, uh, uh, had mentioned, um, no, no, I think it actually was Rogue Bishop talking about, um, uh, Nelson Mandela saying he's not a saint unless a saint is a sinner that just keeps on going or keeps on trying or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, as a quote yeah, by think, other Randland. Yeah. Quoting, quoting so wait, I was, I was quoting you, quoting him, quoting Mandela. You're a quoter, man. Yeah. And going, going back to You can to quote T-ball. me on that. What's the problem? What is it? Someone's copying me. <laughs> I will quote you. Going back to T-ball, hit, hit her, I would have just been happy if I would have hit. I mean, I struck out I don't know how many times, and it was T-ball. <laughs> it, was a good, it was a good pitcher. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That means- man, I was okay. a rock star in T-ball, man. <laughs> yeah, <we're- laughs> Listen, yeah. they always say they say the best hitter for last, right? Because the last one, he always had to run all the way home, right? Before mm-hmm. they, before so the- you, were, you were clean up? I was clean. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. So, and clean up in T-ball is the last man. It's not the number four yeah. man. 
Oh, but, okay. uh, yeah. man, I'll never forget, man. I line drive my my head coach. I line drive him right in the. <laughs> uh, I just kind of stood there froze, and he's like, "Run, run, run!" <laughs> you you made him the head coach, huh? <laughs> That's right. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. or head coach. <laughs> anyway, I used to we, play baseball. We, we I played. Here. Um, what position did I play? Left out. Yeah, I, I figured you played. I figured you played uh, right bench or something. Yeah, that was in football. <laughs> I think I think it's important though to remember that that God knows our hearts, and there there is a difference. Okay, so when we're talking about successes and failures as leaders, Jacob obviously recognized the the weight of the responsibility that he was to carry. Now, obviously, we we can be forgiven. For, for anything, you know, if we, if, you know, if we make mistakes and we sincerely repent, um, I, f- I feel like the difference is if, if we're sincerely doing our best, that's one thing. But if we are intentionally slacking off or, or choosing to not do the things that we know we should be doing, that's a very right. different story. But like you said, um, it's like changing a tire on a, on a moving vehicle. I feel like you know, the, the word sin is based on an old archery term, you know, something Jordan Peterson talks about. Um, I think it's the Greek, uh, hamartia is it means to miss the mark. It's competing in an archery tournament and you don't hit the bullseye you've sinned. You know, and, and so sin is missing the mark. And I feel like if we are aiming the best we can with what we have to work with, that's, that that's all that we can be expected to do. We can't. Everybody has agency. I think of it like if, if I'm if I'm shooting a rifle and my scope is off. You know, if I'm aiming the best I can with with what I have to work with, then even if I'm missing the mark, I'm doing the best I can. And little by little, as we learn and grow, I'm adjusting my sights, right? And as I adjust my sights, year after year, the more that I learn, the more that I grow, the more that I progress, my my sights get more and more accurate. And the more accurate my sights are, the the higher the standard that I'm going to be held to because I have the ability to hit the mark more accurately based on what I have. And that's what I feel like God knows what we, he knows our hearts and he knows what what knowledge we have and what we have to work with and what our intentions are. And I feel like that's an important thing to remember. Mm-hmm. For sure. Much what, if given, much what if I'm beat down? What if I'm just tired? I mean, just constantly, you know, battling jobs, battling, you know, everyday life and just don't have the energy to 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 be fully involved with my kids and try and teach them every little principle and discipline over motivation. <laughs> Do your best. I mean, I know that we're that's something I feel like I know I've heard it, general conference talks um, talking about motherhood in that way. And I I believe that it can apply is equally to fathers as parents mothers and fathers you know we're stretched thin and and stressed out and you know sometimes we just even if we we have the knowledge we might not have the 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 willpower or the energy to do all the things that we feel like we should be doing and we might feel like we're not living up to what we should be doing but i think that's where grace comes in yeah, because I mean, I think a lot of I think I mean I know I felt that way, you know, uh, in times, and I think a lot of people feel feel that way. Just I tell I tell you one thing that helps me is um, fellowship. Um, I was I was kind of trying to search for the word, but it's the opposite of isolation. It's I would guess fellowship would be the best the best fit for that. Um, I, I know sometimes when the going gets tough and I get super busy, like um, a tendency or temptation is to isolate, to just say, I don't feel like going out. I don't feel like hanging out. I don't have the time to do this. I don't have the time to go to T-ball or, or, um, or whatever. And you, you, you tend to isolate. Um, but I think if, if, if my history is anything like anyone else's, uh, it shows that that's usually not a good idea. Isolation leads to just self, self, um, self-focusing, and 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 usually it it pulls you further away from from your ideals, further away from your goals. Whereas having some good solid fellowship, you know, it it puts you in the right crowd, puts you in the right mood, um, and I think it gives you wonderful examples um, of of 
of doing the right thing for the right reasons. Because if you're, if you're struggling with doing the right thing, um, even if you know the right reasons, then you, you need that little boost. You need that little help. You need that little encouragement. And sometimes just being around other fellows is, is a way to do that. Uh, it's interesting. There was, um, there was a study I just ran across it not too long ago and it was fascinating the takeaway from it. Um, and it was an observational study. Women uh, in this study would talk to each other face to face. Right. Uh, but men would turn at an angle and it was just an odd thing. And if you get a group, uh, the men even more so, uh, and, and the, the context was they were trying to do like, um, therapy and, and finding the right number of, of people. What was the right number of people for positive therapy and stuff in, in a conversational setting. And, uh, the, the women did quite well, you know, like talk about the problems and stuff, but the men didn't until they gave them something else to do. talk about it was like a, a busted mower i think was the example of a broken lawnmower and so they all stood around in a circle and talk about it and then before you know it they're not talking about the mower anymore uh, they're talking about life and um so the the, the takeaway from the, the the you know the person that was um, writing it up or whatever was uh, that that women tend to talk face to face um more openly and and men talk shoulder to shoulder um they have to kind of feel uh, connected at the shoulder uh, doing something uh, together and then they, then they open up and, and right. talk. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I've seen more very, very mm -hmm. interesting. There, there, there's a comedian that, that, uh, shares a, a pretty good joke about, about, uh, going golfing with his buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Y'all seen it, that? Is yeah, it Bargatze? Nate yeah. Bargatze, is that him? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't know. It didn't come up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, did, did, yeah. What, oh, didn't he get a How divorce like six months yeah. ago? Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, is he dating anybody? I don't know. Yeah, don't know. yeah. <laughs> How do you not know? Yeah. How do you How do you not know? <laughs> that was good. That was good. You know, a couple of things that I thought was thinking of while we're talking about all this, and I think I'm mostly directing this at you, Jackson, because you're so darn hard on yourself. But I think there's a lot, no, seriously, but I think there's a lot of guys out there like that. There may be a lot of gals out there like that. Um, one, the first thing that, the first thought that came into my mind was something that I've, I've said many times, and that is we had the most perfect parents that ever will be, did nothing wrong, still lost a third of their kids. wasn't because of what the parents did. It was mm -hmm. the choices of the kids. And the second one was... Um, uh, it hits me a little harder. I don't know why tonight, but it is. Um, uh, the Savior knew, Jackson, that Peter was going to deny him. But he still loved him, and he still forgave him before he ever e even did it. You know, just kind of gave him the look on the third time when the cock crowed like, mm, you know, like a guy does. They looks at him sideways, like you guys were saying. <laughs> but he already knew. Right? You don't think that Peter felt like trash? Of course he did. You don't think that Peter got forgiven for that? Of course he did. He just became better after that. Became better. Became better. He didn't stay in the moment like, oh my gosh, I'm probably the worst apostle that ever lived. I might as well just <laughs> die right now. Right? All right. Okay. Very good. You know, yep. there's... um. I don't know where everybody wants to go from here, but, um, man, I loved chapters two and three when it talked about chastity. And that is a very controversial subject in the world today. Many yeah, would wanna, say that it's, many would say it's antiquated. Yeah. Go ahead, Kenny. I, I want to just touch on something really quick before we leave chapter one. That is oh, just sure. a little thing that I, one of those little things that I don't remember noticing before. That's really cool. Um, verses 10 and 11 says the people having loved Nephi exceedingly, he having been a great protector for them, having wielded the sword of Laban in their defense and having labored in all his days for their welfare. Wherefore, the people were desirous to retain in remembrance his name and whoso should reign in his stead were called by the people, second Nephi, third Nephi, and so forth, according to the reigns of the kings. And thus they were called by the people, let them be of whatever name they would. So it's cool. We, we read about all these Nephi's in the Book of Mormon. 
It's like, man, there's a lot of Nephi's, but all of the, the, the Nephi's that were rulers during the time of the Kings, Nephi became a title just like Caesar, you know, or, or Pharaoh, you know, it was, so it, I, I, I don't remember King you know, George. I probably, have, I probably have noticed that before, but it, I don't remember noticing that, that like the, the Nephi became a, just a title, regardless of what your name was, you know? And so, yeah, they were just like, you know, Caesar, Caesar Augustus or Caesar, you know, they, they in Rome, you know, they Caesar, call yeah. Caesar as if it was his first name, you know, like his name is Caesar, you know, they were like, yeah, his name is Nephi, even though his name may or may not have been Nephi, but you know, Nephi was just a title. And so I, th I just thought that was a little cool. Um, tidbit there that yeah. I don't remember yeah. noticing before. It, it, it just goes to show you the I mean the the amount the the impact that the Nephi that, had. That, yeah that, that, that yeah. Nephi yeah. had. And little yeah. Caesars actually closed down here. Uh, <laughs> I heard. Man, I heard that. I, I, what in the world? Thank goodness. No, got, don't say that, that man. It's, I love they got too little, I guess. <laughs> it's just too little. Too little, too little too of late. toppings, too little of this, too little of that. Just too little. Yeah. Too little, too late. <laughs> so what you got there, Michael, in, uh, in uh, chapter two? Well, um, there's some pretty cool things. One was the talk by Elder Bednar, we believe in being chased. But the other thing, um, and I have to admit, I have not read this from cover to cover, uh, but I'm, I'm going to. I need to uh, for sure. It, it's taken from... It says your body is sacred, taken from for the strength of youth, a guide for making choices. You know, that should be called the strength for everybody, a guide yeah. to making choices. I mean, every adult needs to read that book over and over again. It should be the strength of youth with Y-O-U underlined. <laughs> there you go. Well, That's and according to God, yeah. yeah, and according to God, we're all youth anyway. Ain't none That's of right. us growing up were adults, you know. But, um, Unless you're from up north, then you're Utes. Yeah, they're yeah. all you Utes, all you. Utes guys. Yeah. Um, but the, the in the strength of youth, this is really, really cool. Uh, I really love the way that it explains. You know, your body is in the image of God. Your soul is made up of your body and your spirit. Sexual feelings are an important part of God's plan. Um. Treat your body and others' bodies with respect. Do things that will strengthen your body but not hurt or damage it. Keep sex and, and sexual feelings sacred. Uh, then there's the promised blessings, treasures, and living the law of chastity. It's just, and then there's some questions, you know, um, which is I probably should have read this before you did the very first, um, uh, what, what, what do you call it again? Rogue Bishop reacts. Mm -hmm. RBR. <laughs> RBR. RBR. Um, this was cool. And th there's other things I'm going to just, I'm not going to read the whole thing, just bits and pieces here. But um, he says, uh, one of the questions was, what is the Lord's standard on dress, grooming, tattoos, and piercings? And I remember when this first came out, there was a lot of bishops that had trouble with it. Because they felt like it wasn't telling us, hey, listen, you know, like like the instruction we had before was don't go to R-rated movies. Don't have two piercings in your ear or only have two or just, what was it? No, no, one, not two, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It was a lot. It was a don't, bunch of lists. Don't date before you're 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do's and don'ts. But if you, I'm, I want to read this one in its entirety because it really, to me, it, it puts the choices squarely upon the person where it should be on the person making the choice. You know, it makes them think it's like, like something that I tried to do and I'll get to this here in a minute, but something that I've always tried to do now that I'm, you know, almost dead is before when someone would say, well, why don't you drink or why don't you do this? You know? And I would say, it's against my religion. Or it's against it's against the word you know the word of wisdom or right? right now my reaction or my statement is is because I've made a choice not to which is really what it should be right I've made yeah. a choice not to or I've made a choice to do right not it's uh, it's it's I'm not That's I'm not cop out. Yeah, yeah I'm not shifting the burden to the church and saying well uh, the church I would 
Yeah, the church yeah. tells me I can't. It's their fault, you know. I, I'm just doing what they say. No, I'm not a blind sheep just following. I made that choice. This is cool. Let me read this. The Lord. It's, the question was, what is the Lord's standard on dress, grooming, tattoos, and piercings? The Lord's standard is for you to honor the sacredness of your body, even when that means being different from the world. Let this truth and the Spirit be your guide as you make de decisions, especially decisions that have lasting effects on your body. Be wise and faithful and seek counsel from your parents and leaders. Wow. Right? Yeah. You, you make this choice. Here's the guidelines. But remember, it's your choice. And use these guidelines when making that choice. It, it, I, I just love the way this thing reads. And it talks about living the law of chastity and, and, uh, uh, and that sex and sexual feelings are not only good, but but they're sacred, yes. right? And um, I don't remember who it was at one time. This was a long time ago before you guys were even born, I think. But uh, they said uh, if it wasn't for sexual urges, there's not a man on this world that would ever get married. Because <laughs> they would love just being by themselves, hunting or fishing or fixing a mower or whatever, right? Uh, but because of that, they're like, hmm, maybe I should go get married. <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily true or not. I'm just, I'm just using that as an I think example. It is. <laughs> <laughs> as an example that these urges are important. These urges were given to us by our Heavenly Father. And it's just like everything else that we have. Satan is going to try to counterfeit or turn this around and make it something that it isn't say make it something lustful you know turn something great into something terrible that and th you have to remember that that's satan his that that tactic is his and it's been his tactic for ever since the, the the world was created right but everything that the lord has given us we we do within the bounds that the lord has set and that 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 the, those sexual activities between a man and a woman, married, a married man and woman is what it says, mm -hmm. properly, uh, properly married. Um, Legally and lawfully married, maybe. Yeah. Well, it doesn't say that, but that that's. Yeah. But we'll still throw we'll still throw that in there, Kenny, because um, <laughs> it means the same uh, thing. Yeah. That those that that act those those those, those sexual things are sacred and they're beautiful between a husband and a wife and it actually draws them closer together in fact it says um literally <laughs> thanks thanks little <laughs> steezers yeah. sexual it. feelings are an important part of god's plan to create happy marriages and eternal families so that was the very first line sexual feelings are an important part of of God's plan to create happy marriages and eternal families, period. These feelings are not sinful. They are sacred. Because sexual feelings are so sacred and so powerful, God has given you his law of chastity to prepare you to use these feelings as he intends. The law of chastity states that God approves of God approves of sexual activity only between a man and a woman who are married. Me and the in the world ignore or even mock God's law, but the Lord invites us to be his disciples and live a standard higher than the world's. And you're still reading from the first rank of youth. Yeah. Yeah. I I would encourage I'm going to. I would encourage everybody to grab that and read it from cover to cover. Um, it is amazing. And what, well, one, you should, especially if you have youth, if you have kids, if you have teenagers, you need to know what they're reading, right? Because when they come to you, don't give them an antiquated answer from the old strength of youth. <laughs> read the from new back one. In my day. Yeah. Read the new one and be prepared to give them that quote or that answer as the Lord would have you, you know, teaching in the Savior's way, et cetera, et cetera. Back in my day, you had to have one cubit between you and your dance partner. When I was dancing at a youth dance one time, that was always, can you fit a Book of Mormon between yeah, you that's two? Right. Well, oh, well there you I, go. I was so rogue even back then. I said, does it look like I'm trying to read right now? <laughs> 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 Ooh, that made some people mad. Probably so. so. 
Go, going along, going along with what you're talking about, uh, you know, Jacob, he had to, he had to speak straight to the men, uh, very directly. And I'm sure that, uh, just, just trying to imagine how these, how these fathers, how these men felt when he says in verse 35, ye have broken the hearts of your tender wives mm -hmm. and lost the confidence mm -hmm. of your children because of your bad examples before mm -hmm. them. And the sobbings of their hearts are sent up to God against you. And because of the strictness of the word of God, which cometh down against you, many hearts died pierced with deep wounds. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's, that'd be hard to hear, hard to hear. Uh, well, uh, probably hard for him to say, you know. Uh, yes, yes. You know, because right. you know he wants to, right? That's not the hard part. The hard part is, how am I going to do this in a way that's, because remember, he's got the memory of Laban and Lemuel, right? How am I, mm -hmm. Laban and Lemuel, sorry. How am I going to do this in a way that's not going to make everybody just get mad and turn away and 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 just ignore the enticings of the spirit how am i going to deliver this in a way that's going to pierce their hearts and cause them to want to repent and change instead of turn and flee i think of brother folker often quoting his grandson he need to do more inspiring and less requiring <laughs> and that's what that, 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 that's what you're talking about that that was what jacob was feeling right Trying mm -hmm. to figure out how he can inspire and not pull out the old hammer and require. Right. Yep. Like right. That. I had, um, so I have, um, some pretty good friends and had this one couple in particular, and this was very recent. They decided that they wanted to have an open marriage. Open being that they wanted to have, uh, different sexual partners because they didn't feel fulfilled by each other, but they still wanted to stay married to each other. And then they would invite those partners over to dinner or whatever and blah, 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 blah. Tax purposes. They want to stay together for tax purposes or what? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm just relating the story. And uh, anyway, um, so what they thought was going to be a pretty cool experience turned out to be painfully hurtful. And uh, they're no longer together. And uh, they had the exact opposite effect. The Lord knows what he's talking about when he says, be chaste and be um, faithful to your partner, to your spouse. Uh, and don't, don't be looking over in other people's yards thinking that's greener because once you get over there, you'll find out that all that green was just a bunch of weeds. Or the septic tank. <laughs> it's right. even worse. That's even right. Worse. I think it's interesting that the term that we, we sometimes use is to make love. And that's because people have understood for many, many generations that the, the, the sexual act creates an emotional bond, creates and strengthens in the, the emotional bond between a couple. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you, take part in that that activity with anyone other than your partner then you're yeah you're creating you're weakening the bond between you and your partner and creating bonds for with sure other people. and so yeah absolutely there was um part, part going along with that there was a reference to the uh gospel topics on different topics there virtue uh, mm -hmm. i had highlighted it before uh, I thought it was really good. It's it's a quote from President Thomas S. Monson, uh, counsel uh, from him. He says, uh, quote, you be the one to make a stand for right, even if you stand alone. Have the moral courage to be a light for others to follow. There is no friendship more valuable than your own clear conscience, your own moral cleanliness. And what a glorious feeling it is to know that you stand in your appointed place, clean and with the confidence that you are worthy to do so. Virtue. Uh, what, uh, I'll briefly mention, uh, just for conversation's sake, earlier, uh, I think, um, 
I guess it was uh, Rogue Bishop talking about when you were 27, your young men's uh, president or whatever, and then Jackson talking about how he kind of messed up along the way or had feared maybe messing up and stuff or not not fulfilling things to the best of his ability. Looking back with hindsight, I would add. But, um, you know, you got to think, though, our entire <laughs> – proselytizing missionary body is essentially made up of 18 to 22 year olds for the most part. I mean, come on, the Lord's going to have a little bit of understanding on, you know, you're not being fully matured to, to, to be a hundred percent all the time. You, you got to, you got a goal to aim for, but you know, and to, to Michael's point, you know, Peter was an apostle. Jesus chose Judas, Judas as an apostle. Like you're going to make, you're going to make some mistakes. People are going to use their agency in ways that you're not happy with. Um, and that's, that's all part of the, the recipe of life. So. Amen to that. I, I, had, I had one more scripture to share. Chapter 4, verse 10. Wherefore, brethren, seek not to counsel the Lord, but mm. to take counsel from his hand. For behold, ye yourselves know that he counseleth, that he counseleth in wisdom and in justice and in great mercy, which is what we're all talking about mm -hmm. over all his works. You know, we, you know, why, Lord, why I'm doing, I'm doing this. Why isn't this happening? Mm -hmm. Right. Or yeah. how come this hasn't happened yet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm paying my tithing. I should be getting a little more income here. My, yeah, there's, my, there's a lot packed into that short little verse there, isn't there? Yeah. Verse 10. Yeah, that's how we are. I mean, we try to counsel God. We say, well, Lord, this is, I've been doing all the right things and I, I, I shouldn't, shouldn't you bless me? Shouldn't I be able to get this job I want or shouldn't I be able to have this or that? And yeah, mm -hmm. we feel sometimes like we, uh, you know, that we're the ones that are, need to counsel God. Yeah. I heard, I saw in a video this week, uh, and this, I mean, you keep thinking like, man, okay, I've, you, you see something or you hear something. Okay, I, I've seen it all, you know, I mean, but I mean, something else comes out. I'm now, I've now seen a video lady in a church of some kind talking about how God worships us. <laughs> and Ooh. his cre we are, we are his creations and he is so invested in us that he is worshiping us. So, what, what, just, are we, did, what are we talking about? I don't know, but my RBR just showed out, didn't it? Just, yeah. uh, just <laughs> flip it. You know, as powerful these 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 chapters are so powerful, and, and yes, there, there's a lot of call to repentance there. And but just remember that that God knew we were going to mess up. Not only does Jesus Christ understand the pains of those that have been sinned upon, right? He understands those pains about the sinner. Not only does he understand the pains that the abused feel, he understands the pains that the abuser feels. He understands all of it. And the, the only way to gain peace, the only way to come back to Father, the only way to feel good about yourself is invite the Savior into his heart. Go through that repentance process again and again and again, no matter how long it takes for the rest of your life, and let the Holy Ghost and the Spirit cleanse you um, so that you can be rectified and find the peace that you need. And remember, no one has gone so far that they can't come back. Just don't give in to Satan's lies. Don't quit. Don't go, don't stop trying. Don't think that God doesn't love you anymore. Don't think that He doesn't want to hear your prayers. Just that's all Satan. He just he just that's all Satan. God wants you. He wants you back. And and there's a reason we have a Savior. And there's a reason why Jesus Christ was chosen. And there's a reason why He was chosen before we ever came to Earth to live. Amen. Amen. Let me, uh, I found that scripture I was looking for. Oh, yay. All right. It's Alma 24, verses 7 through a few. I don't know. This is uh, talking about Ammon and Amulek's mission. 
um, and some of the people they had taught, the anti-Nephi Lehi's, and then the Lamanites preparing to come down upon them and destroy them. And they're not not preparing to to fight back. And and this is what their king told to them. Now, the, in verse seven, now these are the words which he said unto the people concerning the matter. I thank my God, my beloved people, that our great God has in goodness sent these our brethren, the Nephites, unto us to preach unto us and to convince us of the traditions of our wicked fathers. And behold, I thank my great God that he has given us a portion of his spirit to soften our hearts, that we have opened a correspondence with these brethren, the Nephites. And behold, I also thank my God that by opening this correspondence, we have been convinced of our sins and of the many murders which we have committed. And I also thank my God, yea, my great God, that he hath granted unto us that we might repent of these things. And also that he hath forgiven us of those our many sins and murders which we have committed and taken away the guilt from our hearts through the merits of his son. And now behold, my brethren, since it has been all that we could do as we were the most lost of all mankind to repent of all our sins and the many murders which we have committed and to get God to take them away from our hearts for it was all we could do to repent sufficiently before God that he would take away our stain. Now, my best beloved brethren, since God hath taken away our stains and our, and our swords have become bright, then let us stain our swords no more with the blood of our brethren. I just think sometimes we, we look upon ourselves harshly and judge ourselves harshly with the shortcomings and imperfections and missing the mark, as Kenny put it. But we look at how great our God is and how forgiving he is to those who repent and call upon the name of his son and are reconciled to him through our Savior. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Another a second amen. amen on that one. Very good. Amen. All righty. There you have it. Episode 214 in the books. Until next time, y'all keep on striving. Boom. Okay, then let's cut it off. Go be with your family.